I know that I rambled a little bit with this. And the main thing that I want the tens of thousands of people that are using our 3D printers to know is that NWA 3D is gone, but I'm still here. And because of that, you're still going to be printing in the classroom. I'm still going to help you print in the classroom. Maker Made, still going to help you print in the classroom. If you need anything, my email and the NWA 3D service email is down below, my new email. NWA 3D is closing, and that really sucks. But everything is not over. I'll talk about later in the video. Uh, this is just something that I want and need to do to talk about. Um, so how did we? Uh, how did we get here? Um, well, let's go ahead and start at the beginning. Um, five years ago, when uh, we founded NWA 3D. Let's uh, roll back the clock. In 2015, I was a teacher, and Joshua Van Vliet uh, was a manager at Harps, and we were both into innovative technology and innovative things, and uh, we decided to start a company, uh, and it was awesome. It was a wild ride. We started um, because we wanted to do something with 3D printing, so we're originally going to make 3D printed parts for people and design stuff and, and print out things. So we got 3D printers and we were working on them and um, I was really into it and I decided um, to take a break from teaching and kind of see where uh, it could go. So to take the leap, if you will. And uh, we did, we took the leap. We, uh, we started working on things and started to learn pretty quickly that design takes a long time and it's the hardest part of uh, digital manufacturing. And we realized that uh, better yet, we could sell 3D printers. Um, that was Josh's idea to, to sell 3D printers to people and then they could make their own things. That's the awesome part and the empowering part of this technology is you can make your own stuff. And uh, the light bulb kind of went off in my head that was like, well, we could teach people how to 3D print because it's hard. And uh, I consider myself relatively tech savvy and I got a 3D printer and had a lot of trouble getting it started and had a lot of trouble just even finding information on the internet is like a fire hose. It still is a fire hose. We decided to start by selling 3D printers to schools and pairing it with training to train them how to use it. So um, we started pretty small, just in Arkansas and people that we knew and started going out through our networks and visiting places. And I still remember um, the first school we ever went to was Lincoln High School. Um, it's not too far away and it's a, a rival school to my high school, which is funny. Um, so I graduated from a town that's maybe 20 miles away from it. And uh, well, right after that, uh, I went to Springdale and went to uh, Helen Tyson Middle School and uh, met, met uh, Miss Brittany Berry and Derek Rashford, two people that I still know today. And they were also super into um, 3D printing. And apparently we were onto something really weird because it's something, I guess it's weird to like sell a product and then support it. Um, I guess that's a strange thing. Uh, and we didn't really know that. We were just like, well, we're going to give everybody training. Um, and we're just going to see how that works. So we kind of started the ball rolling in just our local area and then got connected with the East Initiative. And their goal is to use technology and really anything for kids to create service projects to better their communities. So it's all project-based, it's all students going out in their communities and finding things, ways that they can help and creating awesome stuff for their for their local communities. And, and it's just fantastic class. And they're all over Arkansas. Um, they used to be um, out more outside of Arkansas, but mostly they're in Arkansas and Oklahoma um, now. And um, there's hundreds of these classes and they're awesome and they were craving something like a, a 3D printer that worked because there's so many things that you can do with a 3D printer. It's just such an empowering tool that they were just needed something that worked that was supported. 
and we were both those things so we didn't oversell ourselves we just started saying i mean this is a thing that we're trying to do and you know let's see how, where it goes so we started working with them and um and started doing lots of trainings for east and i traveled all over the state to different classrooms everywhere um teaching 3d printing and dropping off 3d printers if people bought them or if they just wanted to learn about 3d printing i would just show up with 3d printers and talk about 3d printing uh and it was awesome uh but it was really hard <laughs> i about killed myself just driving everywhere where i would you know get up at like f four in the morning and then drive to like a school in south arkansas and uh, teach there sometimes leave from there at like lunch and drive to another school and then uh from there drive home get home at maybe like five or six something like that maybe maybe later than that maybe sometimes eight or nine and then do emails for like two or three hours um to catch up on everything and then um go to sleep for like three or four hours and get up and do it the next day <laughs> um and uh we realized after doing that um for a couple months while i'm frantically going out and driving to all these schools uh josh is building 3d printers in uh in his spare bedroom and in his garage and enlisting his family and friends and um people to help for contract pay and and really anybody who would help us to build 3d printers um to put 3d printers together um and <laughs> so we could sell them so um so he was working the same hours i was um just at home and we got to the point where it was like all right well we gotta we gotta change some some of this <laughs> this is just not sustainable uh so we got the idea to start doing stuff digitally um and that was in like i guess 2000 that was in 2016 yeah so we've been doing driving around for a while really the fall of 2016 is probably when i drove around the most like in, in 2016 and started going to conferences um like histi which is a great conference that we have in hot springs um and that's the first time that we met teachers there who were outside of the East Initiative, really, um, and some of the local libraries in Northwest Arkansas, and they were also hungry for that same type of tech. They want something that is reliable, that works, that's affordable, and we hit all those marks. So um, we started selling to more schools uh, through like science classes and math classes and um, maker spaces and libraries and CTE classes and Project Lead the Way classes and and all of these different ones that were utilizing technology in, in innovative ways and super passionate teachers that were just looking to use technology to to better kids lives which is the incredible thing about 3d printing is you, you're learning so many skills with 3d printing you're learning how to not only run a 3d printer but you learn how to troubleshoot you learn the creative aspects of actually designing something that you thought of and then the robot can make it it's it, it's an incredible learning tool and so many 3D printers, be, before really we, we started, a lot of teachers that we ran into, they had bought 3D printers in the past and they didn't work because the technology just wasn't quite there yet. And now it's improved so much. It's like every year it's getting better and better and better. Um, we had a solid design of a printer and some other printers that we, we sold. Um, this little A5, it's right here. That's our, our, uh, our bread and butter. And the, and the main printer that so many classrooms use and then we uh kind of spread out with selling more 3d printers for teachers that were looking for bigger products um things like the a31 that's right here um and uh other brands like maker gear and raise 3d and lulzbot all different companies that were also selling 3d printers that were uh up to our standards and we're picky on the ones that we resold and that's a whole nother story <laughs> so we did lots of research and found that there's a lot of them that uh, don't really work uh, uh you can get a, like a pretty bad bill of goods and you can spend like 10 grand to get something that just doesn't work uh it doesn't really matter how much money you spend on a 3d printer you can get like a 200 dollars one that works great or a 200 dollars one that doesn't or a ten thousand dollars one that works great or a ten thousand dollars one that doesn't um it's just in the way that they are and the way that they're built and also the way that they're approachable and what type of if it has all kinds of different features like are those features even able to utilize or does someone even know how to 
use all the features that it has because it, it's a complicated machine that you have to learn how to do, uh, which is why it's such a great learning tool because you're learning all of those transferable skills of, of working with a robot, your um, troubleshooting parts of it that might break, you're taking it apart and putting it back together, you're working through a design iterative process where you make something and then you print it and then it doesn't work and you have to find out why it doesn't work. Maybe it's a, a fault with the slicing application. Maybe it's a, a fault with the printer. Maybe it's a fault with your design uh, and you have to figure that out. And it's hard when you start off to see exactly what the problem is, but that's what 3D printing is such an awesome tool for. And that's really why I'm so passionate about it and why it's such an amazing thing um, for not only adults to use, but particularly kids. And just the way that 3D printing can just open so many doors to anything. If you can imagine it, you can more than likely print it. Uh, it's great. It's super great. So we got the ball rolling with that. And at the end of 2016, we met Tim Caffrey. And he is also an incredible person, just like Joshua Van Vliet. And he had a lot of experience working with industrial 3D printers. Uh, not tons of experience with desktop 3D printers, which is what we sold. He brought a, uh, a level of expertise to us that we didn't have before. Because we were kind of just stabbing around in the dark and doing research. And Tim brought a whole repertoire of knowledge about 3D printing and digital manufacturing knowledge to us uh, w with his other writing skills and, and technical writing skills and, and everything else too that just added like the missing piece that we needed. And from there, we hired uh, our first employee uh, who was uh, Topher McPherson. And he was great. He uh, helped us build printers and ship printers and get them out the door. And in 2017, we moved with their help uh, outside of, of Arkansas and our surrounding states and went like more nationwide. That was the goal. So we started going to trade shows. We started doing digital trainings in you know 2016 and then moved into Zoom in 2017. And that, we've been doing Zoom trainings since 2017. Um, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And we record them all, too, so they could go back and reference them. And in 2017 uh, and 2018, we traveled all over the place um, to shows all the surrounding states that are around us, all over the central part of the country and the southern part of the country. And it was awesome talking to so many teachers and seeing so many different ways that 3D printing was working or wasn't working for people. And to have that opportunity was really great and really awesome. And um, as we were growing in those two years, I learned so much for, of 3D printing. And I'm so grateful to Tim and Josh for all the things and all the knowledge that I learned from them on the processes of uh, not only how the 3D printer works, but we're forming a company and working together and working as a team on all of this stuff that you have to do behind the scenes, everything from the the finances to the logistics uh, uh and, and all of that and there's no way ever could have been able to get to the point that we got without them it's just no way could that be possible at all and and it was it was an incredible ride um and then we hired um michael so we hired michael allen uh to be our 3d printing teacher uh, which was it was another employee, and he did a fantastic job being a 3D printer teacher and helping us with support and prototyping and, and all kinds of back-end stuff. Um, just kind of a Swiss Army knife of a, of a passionate teacher human. And um, he was great, too. And we, uh, we also hired um, Carly. So um, Carly Palmer is uh, our... 3D printing technician, and she helped us with tech support and design. Her CAD design skills are incredible, and she also has a master's in business, uh, so master's in business administration, and that was helpful too for us to bounce ideas off of and things that we didn't have as we were growing and, and changing everything. 
Uh, so it was really awesome too to work with her as well. And in 2019, uh, really 2018, we kind of started hitting some stumbling areas and some some rocks. Uh, it was really hard. It's really hard to scale a company like ours that's like a niche within a niche. So not only are we 3D printing, which not everybody is 3D printing, we are in education and not everybody's in education. So that became really difficult for us and we had um, to make some difficult decisions. Like we had to raise some prices on our stuff, which that didn't go over well, obviously, uh, to, to, to try to help mitigate some of that. And when the government shut down, and I'm not gonna point any fingers, and any politics of that, uh, not for this video, I could make so many videos about that, but that's not this one, uh, <laughs> is uh, since we sold the schools and the government shut down, well, schools didn't know if they could afford things like lunches. So discretion, dis discretionary technology spending was halted for the most part. So we hit a huge bump there in the beginning of 2019 uh, that was really difficult for us to grow uh, out of as everything just just trying to recover from it it took the rest of the year um for us to try to recover and to try to move forward and to we still saw a light at the end of the tunnel um as we were growing and we got the idea to um instead of using printers that are open source and changing their designs to actually develop a printer from scratch ourselves and uh in tandem with that we also came up with an idea for um, a comic book curriculum called uh, Masters of the Third that some of y'all might have seen and that would teach people how to 3D print. We were able to scale the way that we were but we were still couldn't scale to the extent that we knew um, the market was there for. So we were looking for different ways to do that and that's how we came up with a 3D printer that, uh, that, that we could basically control the entire supply chain on because that, that's always been an issue um, throughout everything. And then a curriculum that would teach people how to 3D print too. That would be comic book based and fun and it kind of like a magic school bus, uh, you know, ask curriculum um, that you could learn 3D printing from. As so we're recovering and doing all right, we were still having some issues with trying to get everything together and started developing um, our 3D printer more and more. And um, we met a local organization that was helping us called Maker Made. And they had the resources that we needed to help actually bring it to market. So we started working with them to design it. And um, this was in like fall of 2019 is when we got connected with them. You know, that's kind of chugging along and then chugging along with some content for Masters of the Third and then still um, growing at like a, a steady rate, but not the rate that we really wanted to because schools were still kind of guarding their budgets because they weren't really sure it was going to happen. And... Um, we kind of rolled into 2021 kind of ready to launch Tyro and Masters of the Third to pretty much keep the company afloat um, because it just wasn't, the sales just weren't sustaining enough to pay all of the expenses that we need and uh, our salaries even to pay us. So like early spring as we're first started to go out and um, started the pre-order on our printer and, and just first really started kicking it off, COVID hit, a global pandemic that you can't plan for. And we knew about it. Really, we, we, we saw some signs that this was a big deal, but we didn't really even realize how big of a deal it was because we were dealing with China with our um, development processes and China got shut down first. And that was kind of like, this is, uh, this is serious. And then when it came here, obviously, because it's germs, then everything shut down. And when everything shut down, then that's not only schools, but that's everything. And we sell like 98% to schools. And when they're all closed, then they're not making purchases. So that was really hard. And as, you know, we're trying to figure out ways for the company to go forward, um, Josh and Tim decided that it's not really – for them and they want to move on to other opportunities and there's no hard feelings. I don't have any hard feelings toward them and uh, uh, I hope they don't have any toward me. And I decided to try to continue it and 
try to see if I can salvage everything going forward. Um, to try to find a transition or to try to find a way um, to get it to keep going. So um, more and more um, as the years been going by and the years been kind of moving forward, I just see that it's just not sustainable for me to do. I can't do all the things that I want to do. Uh, but I feel honor bound, I guess. <laughs> and, um, I just feel like it's the right thing to do, um, to kind of do this. So, um, what's next then? What is the, this? Well, uh, let's talk about that. All right. I'm standing up now. Feel better. Right, let's move on to some like happy stuff that's maybe not so, uh, I don't know, sad. <laughs> so let's talk about some things. So one is warranties. So warranties are all still going to be valid. All the NWA 3D warranties are valid until they're done. Everything is going to be completed. Uh, number two, if it's out of warranty, the parts are going to be free until I run out of them. And I've got stock on tons of stuff. So that's all going to be free until I run out. And after that, it's still going to be really cheap. There, That's one of the reasons why we have those 3D printer parts that are so standard and reliable is you can find them everywhere. So that's going to be a thing that you won't really have to worry about that's still going to be there. Um, if you have a quote out with NWA 3D now, still valid. Uh, it's not going to be completely done until the end of the year. It's when it's going to be all done and no quotes are going to be valid anymore. But if you still have a quote right now, don't worry about it. Um, same with A31. If you still have an A31 out there and you want to get it, then that's something you can go for. Our supply chain fell apart on the A5, so we don't have those anymore. And we're not a reseller of anything else anymore either. But if you'd like to get an A31, you can. Um, also going to release uh, a knowledge base. So... There's tons of videos and things and all those trainings and all the classes that I've talked to about zooming different 3D printer parts and taking apart 3D printers and putting them back together and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to make videos for all of that that's going to be found on our YouTube and linked on our webpage that you can find for every single imaginable thing that could go wrong with your A5 or your A31. So you'll have all those things uh, that, that you need. The uh, next thing is all of the trainings that I've done and Michael's done and some other people's done, I'm going to release in a week. They've all been um, unlisted on everything up to June 1st, which is the beginning of this school year, I'm gonna release before that. So if you are watching this and you don't want your training to be out there um, for whatever reason, no problem at all, I will take it down right away. Just uh, send me a message, an email, or a link, um, uh, or uh, anything on social media, or a PM. Just let me know, and that's no problem at all. But there's tons of awesome information out there, and there's hundreds of them. There's like over 800 videos. And another thing is Masters of the Third. So I am co-founding a nonprofit that is going to launch Masters of the Third in 2021. So you can follow them on social media and, uh, and keep up with that and see that comic book come to fruition. And we're going to be doing a Kickstarter about it. And we're going to be rounding up some artists and actually getting the ball rolling more on that because it pretty much just ran into a wall with, uh, with COVID-19. So we're going to help um, kind of get it unstuck from that wall. And, uh, and, and get it rolling again. So uh, if you want to be a part of that or if you know someone who is an artist or who would like to have content for 3D printing, then also reach out to me. And the most excited thing that I'd like to talk about is, uh, well, wait a minute. Let me change something. There we go. That's better. So... I am, instead of the director of education at NWA 3D, I am the 3D printing team lead at MakerMaid. So I am super excited to be working for them now. They are doing some incredible things in digital manufacturing. For those of you all that don't know MakerMaid, their bread and butter is CNC, like this M2 right here, or the Maslow um, CNC kit.
what we're going to do is we're going to work together to actually support NWA 3D warranties and service and all of that other stuff that I talked about, MakerMade, is going to help out with that. So they're going to be the continuation of all of it for everyone that's currently using it. Uh, and with MakerMade, I'm really excited to be working with an organization of passionate makers. Just like we're passionate makers at NWA 3D, this is passionate makers of a different sort that's been working with CNC. So with digital manufacturing, it's right up my alley. And, and even though I don't know a lot about CNC, uh, it's been awesome to learn so much and to be working with them to develop something that can empower people to create cool stuff in just different ways. And I've been helping them develop a new printer since July. So we took all the stuff that we developed with the previous printer that we were working on and we combined it with their M300 printer and our A31 printer to come out with a super printer that we took all of our experience and your feedback to create and it's called the 300X. And I'm really pumped to show it to you right now and you can get it, the pre-order starts now. On the pre-order, it's gonna be 850 bucks. So it's actually gonna be $150 off on the pre-order and they're gonna be shipping uh, before Christmas. There's tons of content on it. Click on that link, you can find out. It's got all kinds of awesome stuff. It's got Wi-Fi, automatic leveling. It's gonna have a user interface that can actually work with you and troubleshoot and teach you how to 3D print, which is, you know, my bread and butter where it's gonna walk right through it and it's gonna be a huge touch screen that, uh, that you can do all of this on. So I'm still working on creating innovative things to make you make stuff easier. And I'm really excited to be doing this with MakerMade now and to continue the legacy of NWA 3D and all the incredible things that students and users have done with our 3D printers, all the ways that they've helped their communities and done so many awesome things. I could not be more thankful and grateful for this journey. And I know it's always hard to say goodbye, but we wouldn't have been anything without our customer base and without all of the stuff that y'all have done like I take my hat off to the incredible things that I've seen kids and adults too of course 3d print uh, but especially kids and that to me has been so fun and it's been my favorite part of NWA 3d is just seeing the incredible things that people have been making with tools that that I helped teach them how to do and I helped to develop. So that to me has been the most rewarding part of the NWA 3D journey these past five years. And I thank everyone that was a part of us on this journey. Um, a special shout out to you to um, the East Initiative and HSU STEM and Josh and Tim and Patrick and Chris and everybody else at MakerMade to get us to this point it's it's a transition is what it is i mean that's that's the way everything's got to be in this pandemic like we can't just shut all the doors and then never open them again we got to open new ones we got to open new doors so uh if you need anything at all like i said my contact info is down below as well as the nwa 3d service email that we're going to be ser servicing forever so go ahead and check that out if you need any help we got your back and everybody like take care out there Stay safe and have fun making stuff. That's a wrap. All right. Well, this video's over. That was easy. <laughs> uh... <laughs>